A new study from Tufts, it's linking grain-free dog food, heart disease in dogs. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome, click there to subscribe, hit that bell to sign up for notifications, and then I encourage you to sign up for my brand new webinar, DCM and Dogs, Everything You Need to Know. You can click the link in the box below to sign up. With this new study, do you need to be rethinking what you're feeding your dog? So let's look at the study. They looked at nine diets of the top 16 that the FDA were reported to be linked to heart disease in dogs. They call them the three P diets. That means they included either peas or lentils, the pulses, potatoes and or sweet potatoes as part of the main ingredients of those diets. Then they compare those to nine non 3P diets. Those that did not include peas, potatoes, sweet potatoes as one of the top ingredients. In other words, you know, they're looking at like, i.e. here, my carnivore high protein just so happens to be grain free, but guess what? Include peas as part of the diet which the poodle loves versus some of the more traditional diets which are higher in carbohydrates. A bit about DCM, dilated cardiomyopathy, you know, occurs in people. It is the second most common heart disease affecting our dogs. Fortunately, it's very uncommon, especially in the medium and smaller breeds, i.e. little Tula, but in certain breeds such as the Doberman Pinscher, you know, almost 50% of those dogs can get DCM. And there are other breeds with a higher incidence of DCM, the Newfies, Great Danes, for instance. In that case, you can be looking as upwards of 10% of those dogs can be affected. But for most guys, it's pretty uncommon, i.e. the Golden Retrievers. This whole big investigation in part started because all of a sudden a breed, the Golden Retriever, which seldom was ever diagnosed with DCM, was all of a sudden showing up with DCM. So clearly there is some sort of associated link between diet and DCM. So how many dogs have really been diagnosed with diet associated DCM? As of September 2020, the FDA has reported 1,100 dogs being diagnosed with diet associated with DCM. You know, we're looking at you know, a population of 75 to 80 million dogs in the United States. We're still looking at a fraction of a percent. Typically what is causing DCM? We know one, there's a clear genetic component, i.e. look at the Doberman Pinschers, similar in people. Two, we know there's a direct link between an amino acid called taurine. We know that when food is deficient in taurine, especially in cats, they develop heart disease, cardiomyopathy. Carnitine, another amino acid, it's key to for normal heart function and development. If your dog, your cat is clearly deficient in carnitine, they can also develop cardiomyopathy. And let's just look into a little bit more details of the study. They looked at an array of different biochemical markers, one of the ways you can track certain ingredients within foods. And what they found is in the 3P diets, you know, those grain-free diets, they had over 88 different markers that were higher, along with 23 that were lower. What's really interesting, when they looked at the taurine levels in the 3P dog food versus non-3P dog food, exactly the same, no different in measured taurine. They looked at carnitine levels, Exact same, there's no difference, 3P versus non-3P, which is like, so what's going on? So what are they concluding or getting out of this? Well, first they said that peas are the single biggest ingredient that is contributing to the differences. The peas are all in that, the 3P group versus peas not being in the non-3P group. Then they're trying to hypothesize as what's going on. You know, why are some dogs getting DCM linked to diet? Those are on the 3P dog foods. One, they looked at deficiencies. So we know that in some of these foods, they're deficient in some of the B vitamins, some of the cofactors, which are pretty important in terms of taurine synthesis. Maybe that's what's going on. Secondly, they then postulated, well, maybe it's the excess number of things. You know, those plant-based amino acids that typically aren't in the conventional dog foods. They postulated that some of those plant-based compounds, they can affect carnitine metabolism. So that another key essential amino acid, important for normal heart function. I mean, great, it may be in the diet, but if your body can't absorb it, metabolize it, and get it into the heart muscle cells, it's not doing any good. Hmm. Then the last hypothesis they put forward is what about heart toxicity? You know, there's certain ingredients, I what's in seeds, say what's in your apple seed, it can have cyanide, it can be directly cardiotoxic. The last thing they did say, if you read through the studies, is that they can exclude the possibility that other contaminants, you know, such as pesticides, heavy metals, things like Roundup, uh, could be 
a contributing cause. You know, it's things that they didn't test for. In the end, what do they suggest you do? Well, they suggest talk to your veterinarian, consider supporting bigger brands that have veterinary nutritionists on staff, and perhaps avoid things like peas, maybe think twice about grain-free dog food. So is there a link with some dogs developing DCM link to die? Clearly, yes, there is. Should you be though super concerned, just like toss out the grain-free food, like go back to the science diet? In my opinion, no, especially if your dog is doing well on that diet. But if your dog is, you know, a larger breed, potentially at higher risk of DCM, your dog happens to be a golden retriever, then perhaps you want to be thinking twice about feeding those peas. More than anything else, I think it's really important that you look at burying your dog's food. You don't just feed dry kibble, right? It seems like the bulk of the dogs that have developed DCM linked to diet, they mean eating this, like just exclusively dry kibble. So make some of your dog's food at home. I'll link to some of the videos I've done on good homemade dog food recipes. Consider even feeding raw. When part of the original study came out, they came out through UC Davis, they found a direct correlation for many of the dogs with taurine. And when they started to supplement these golden retrievers with taurine, many of them responded well. So you may want to think about adding in additional taurine, especially if you have a breed that's at high risk, specifically if you have a golden retriever. Thanks for watching my diet and DCM update. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications. And I really encourage you to sign up for my new webinar. We're gonna go into much more detail on what we just discussed today. We're gonna be talking about specific remedies of all the most common dog diseases linked to diet. And you know, more importantly, what you can do about it. You can click the link in the box below to sign up.